It is October 17th. It's about 9.15 and we're going to commence or begin an interview with uh, Deputy Del Josie from Miller County. Uh, myself, Josh, uh, Detective Josh Chappell, and Detective Crow, uh, Cole Christensen will be uh, doing the interview. Um, <coughs> let me just begin by, we appreciate you coming down. I know it's kind of a long drive from Miller County to here, uh, but we appreciate you being here. We're going to get through this, and as we go along, if you have any question of us, feel free to ask. We'll answer it the best we can, and where we go. Um, I, I say that we just begin, and you just tell us the events that happened uh, last night, and if you can kind of be specific in about time frames uh, and that kind of stuff. And so, anyway, go ahead. Um, there was actually two nights ago, Monday night. Um, I was working in on the west side of the county, uh, another deputy and, I, deputy and I had gone out to dinner. When we got back in our trucks, I think it was right after that, sometime after that, I saw on the computer an uh, auto theft had come up uh, for the guys on the east side of the county. The, I guess I should back up. The vehicle was stolen from the reservation, the Indian reservation, which is just a mile or two uh, north of Kanosh. And so when it was stolen, the uh, witness had seen it leave south and they thought they had gone up the canyon. Uh, a subject I knew was Corey Kanosh had stolen, he and some guy I didn't know, and I still don't know, I think it's Dana something, I still don't know the guy, um, had stolen a vehicle from Corey's mom and she said that they probably went up the canyon and uh, and so we were just waiting for the the vehicle. So we sat there. Once we got done with that, we just BS'd for however long we were there. And then I told Deputy Peacock, I said, Well, I'm going to run and get gas because I was just at about half tank. And uh, I just said, I'm going to go get gas in case we get in a chase or something. I looked where you can see out for a long ways, pulled off right there, uh, got out, took a leak. As I was getting back in my truck, and as I came up, I saw a car come from on the same street and then turn left about uh, three blocks probably north of me. Saw it turn and I was like, oh, probably not. And then I was thinking, well, nobody else. I didn't see anybody else, so I stomped on it. Got going and by the time I even got there, the car was crossing Main Street, and but I couldn't tell because it was two blocks away still. So I stomp on it again, get to Main Street and the car was turning on First East. And so when I saw it, I didn't know for sure, but I was pretty sure it was it. So I got got up there as quick as I can. Well, that's just residential still right there. Uh, when I could tell the vehicle was going fast, I told Peacock, Deputy Peacock, who was just probably five, six blocks away from me at the time, but up uh, the canyon, I said, I think I've got this vehicle on First East. We're heading north. So anyway, just it's within a mile where that road comes out on the highway that the turn to the reservation road is mm -hmm. that heads up to the east. So it turned on there. So I think when we turned on there, it was just still a few blocks ahead, but I was closing pretty quick. Um, and I told that I told dispatch or Peacock, I think it was dispatch, I, I think I said something to the effect that I think they're just gonna come up to the house and bail because I couldn't figure out why they would turn up that road other than they're going home, home. going to bail and, mm -hmm. you know, lock themselves in the house or something. And at that point is when I could see uh, the subject I know is Corey Kanosh was in the passenger seat. Um, and I could see him clear as anything. We're from here to the wall away. And I've got the spotlight still shining that right in the car. And then I saw the driver who I still right now couldn't even tell you what he looks like. I just knew it was a guy. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the car took a left, which is onto the dirt part, right off of Res Road, because I think they saw Peacock coming. By then, Peacock was close enough that he was kind of calling stuff, like just saying, we headed up this road, we're just passing the cemetery. And so I still had my radio, but I wasn't really saying anything. And so I'm like, well, that car can get there, I can get there. So there were bushes, and I could see a little ditch, and so I just kind of went, ah, and it wasn't as bad as I thought. I just went through and then the car was stopped uh, and 
The driver door was closed, but I didn't see anyone in there. The passenger door was open, um, and so I turned off my siren as I was pulling in because I planned on jumping out and yelling, and uh, we know how irritating the sirens are when you're trying okay. to yell. So I shut that off. Corey, at that point, is reaching in to the car to grab something, so I kind of waited Well, he grabs a thing of beer, a box of beer. I closed my truck door, left it running, locked it, and then took off in a foot pursuit. After Corey. Uh, yeah, and I think right as I, yeah, it was before I got out, right as we pulled up and I saw it, I just told, I think I just said foot pursuit, um, so that Peacock would know, because he was still coming behind me, and so dispatch knows. How far do you think Peacock, was Peacock very, I mean, how far away do you think? I think was? we lost him on that dirt road. I think windy, we gained right? a lot of ground, or yeah, I think we gained a lot of separation on that road because I was surprised because I kept looking in my mirror and he seemed like he was farther back than I thought. But he's got a dog in there that's gonna be rolling around. all over. I mean, I was losing stuff. I, I didn't even know where the stuff was coming from off my visors and things. So anyway, in that first. 50 yard, I'm not sure how far that was. Um, when you're fat and out of shape, it seems like <laughs> farther. But so as we're going, I decide to pull out my taser because I was starting to gain on him. I got close enough where I think I was probably about from here to that wall away, so 10 feet, whatever that is. And I thought I had a pretty good chance then. So I turned on my taser. Um, I'm just saying, stop, stop, stop. Um, I don't know if I told him I'm going to tase you. I just kept saying stop, stop. Anyway, I kind of stopped real quick and then shot so that I'd have a good steady thing. And I thought the one hit him, and but he kept running. So I took off running with him so that the uh, cables didn't get jerked out. So I ran and then I actually, so I think I let it go through that whole cycle as we were running. When it didn't work, uh, I turned the taser off, took the cartridge off, and just dropped the cartridge. And that's when I knew for sure that it had hit him because it was dragging behind him now. So I was about where that cartridge was, and I think those cartridges are 21, 25 feet. So that's about how far I was behind now when I slowed to let that cartridge out. I don't recall ever on any of that where he dropped any of it. I think I was just Focus. focused on him and... Uh, just chasing him at that point. I don't recall when we get here, I don't recall the beer box anywhere. I don't, so, you know, you guys know, but I don't, I'm assuming he dropped it somewhere, okay. but I don't know when that happened. Okay. Um, this is what it felt like to me is how we ran, because the reason I say that is because there were bushes. This area here, uh, I was closing in pretty good, and then he tripped. Um, so I don't know how far that was. So he actually tripped falls on the ground, and when he fell, I was probably this close to him again, to where the wall is. Um, I didn't have my taser cartridge, so I didn't pull my taser out again, because I thought I'm gonna have to get too close. He was on his side. He had, when he first fell, he went like this. After you took the taser off, you took the cartridge off, you dropped I it. Deployed you, my, or you I deployed my, or I holstered my taser, yeah. It. So it was in my holster, but I didn't have another cartridge for it. So, you know, I'm gonna have to get right up to him to use mm -hmm. that if I wanted to do it. So I didn't even pull that out. Had the flashlight, well he's, so if he's laying like this, I'm coming from this way and he's on his side like this and I couldn't see his right hand. It was completely under his side. And he's just laying there. I'm like, show me your hand, show me your hand, show me your hand. And uh, he's just like, ha, 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 ha. you know, just kind of mocking me. I'm like, show me your hand now. Roll over on your stomach and keep your hand out. And he wouldn't do it, so. So at this point, have you got? Have you gone to your gun? I haven't gone to okay. my gun. I think I have my hand on my gun, okay. just waiting. But I did not have it out. Um. So he just kept saying, like, just mocking me, just making. I don't even know what he said. Uh, it just was like he was laughing at me, whatever he was doing. So, um, I I got a little closer because I was gonna just get hands on with him. And as I went to get hands on, he started to roll onto his back more, which would have, in my opinion, brought that hand out. 
So I either put my foot on his side to roll him back on his stomach or my knee. All I know is I ended up on the ground holding him to keep that arm under and I reached under and had a hold of his arm somewhere because um, at that point that was my threat because I couldn't see anything in that hand. So I'm just like, pull your hand out, pull your hand out, get on your stomach. And we're, he, at that point he's not really fighting, he's just not cooperating. And so I'm trying to get him to go on his stomach so that that hand's going to come out to my side where I can see whatever. So I'm on top of him. Well then, I'm like, let me see your hand, let me see your hand. Well then I'm able to pull and I, when I pull his hand out, there's nothing in it. And so I'm like, okay, at this point I still have my flashlight out in this hand, I think my left hand. So I grab hold of him and I'm like, and he starts, I can feel it changes at that point. It's not just him laying there, it's my hands out and now he's trying to get up. So I had reached under his, both his arms or at least this one and then with this one I was trying to grab and then when he started standing up, I just got on the radio because my radio was right here. I just reached up and just said 1078. Um, I may have said he's fighting or something. Just so that Peacock, I knew Peacock was somewhere coming. I wanted him to know that when you get there, we might be scrapping. Because mm -hmm. that's what I felt was going to happen because he started standing up. As he was standing up, I'm like, stay down, stay down, stay down. And then I start saying, stop resisting, stop resisting as he's standing up. Well, I tried to kick his leg out so that he would stay flat. And I really thought I could control him. I thought I was in a good position. If he's, he was like this, so his head here, I was like this across him. So I thought it was a pretty good position to be able to drive my feet, you know, and just mm -hmm. keep pushing him down until somebody got there. Well, he was able to just stand up slowly. Well, as he was standing, he reached back and grabbed my leg, and that freaked me out because at that point I'm thinking, he's trying to take me down. He's not trying to get away. So I punched at him. I don't know if I hit him, but I, punt, I aimed at his face because of how I was like that. I was just trying to get him to let go. And again, I'm saying, let go, stop resisting. And I punched as hard as I could, but there's nothing on my knuckles. I didn't feel anything after, and it's still kept going so I don't know that I even hit him. I know I tried as hard as I could to flat out just punch him in the face to get him to let go. He keeps standing. Is it okay if I stand? Oh yeah, absolutely. And so he's got your, does he have your leg at he this has, point? He has my right leg like inside like this. Mm -hmm. So he's grabbing kind of like that. And so like I said, that's kind of freaking me. So I'm just trying to extend my leg to get it away. And he just keeps standing up, standing up. And it's kind of surprising me to be honest because I'm not the strongest guy, but it surprised me that he was able to do this. And uh, so as he's coming up like this, as soon as he gets up, I go to create distance and I just shoved him with both my hands, like in this area, and we stayed like that because I was just trying to create the distance. I shoved him. At that point, he grabbed hold of me in this area. Um, I think his thumb was on my throat because I could feel pressure. But I was just worried he's got a hold of me. Um, so he's facing this way at this point. So how he was, when he stood up, we switched. So I ended up with my back this way. He was there. Um, and so we're fighting. And at this point, I'm telling him to let go. And I'm trying to just get my arms free, you know, gain whatever. He's got a hold of me like this. And I'm not sure where his left hand was. He had a hold of me good though because I was trying to get away. So I'm just like, let go, let go. And uh, and I may have still said stop resist. I think at this point I'm just saying let go. Well, when I could tell he wasn't letting go and we're going, I'm going backwards as he's pushing me. I took my flashlight in my right hand and just hit him as hard as I could across the face. And when I did that, it was like, 